So a few months ago, I saw this video on YouTube about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And uh, I, I remember watching it and stopping and thinking, this cannot be right. It took everybody by surprise. Uh, it was very well researched. We went and followed up and did our own research to make sure that it was right before I started talking about it. It was very professional, a little bit nutty at first because it's a conspiracy theory. But it was a conspiracy theory about a 29-year-old bartender randomly becoming a, a socialist hero in the U.S. Congress. That's crazy. According to the video, AOC's rise to stardom was no accident because AOC had been primed for the role. She had been coached on every single policy point that she makes. The real surprise was that this huge story came out of nowhere and went viral instantly. It was not the work of reporters from the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, Fox News, New York Times. There was no news organization behind it. The claims in the video hadn't appeared anywhere in the mainstream media. They hadn't even been discussed by conservative media. When I watched it, I thought, this is either really ballsy as a lie, or it's true. It was from an uh, 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 anonymous YouTube uh, person who broke a massive news story. Nobody in the media seemed to even be aware of the story. Not only that, uh, this is a story that has impact on our culture. This would not have been possible 10 years ago. Some guy who you've never heard of breaking a story this big. I don't know if it could have happened five years ago. Well, I was immediately enthralled. The video seemed like just one more sign that the mainstream media is fully collapsing. Naturally, we wanted to know more about the disruptive person behind the video. But what we found were a bunch of videos similar to the AOC video on a YouTube account that has only been active for a year. And a guy called Mr. Reagan on YouTube and Twitter. The name Mr. Reagan, an homage to Ronald Reagan, the great communicator. His mission statement is a quote from Ronald Reagan. It's, quote, the trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so, end quote. In the culture war, Mr. Reagan is railing against mainstream media, socialism, and identity politics, and he is using facts to back it up. He's doing it a new way. He eschews all frill, placing his unabashedly conservative stance at the center of his videos, which is a dangerous thing to do lately, especially for him. He lives in Los Angeles, and he's on YouTube. He can reach a million people with a rant that he filmed on his phone. It's not easy. He's been shadow banned, blocked, reported, caught in algorithms, you name it, but he's still going. Without a doubt, he knows his politics, which only adds to the intrigue of this disruptive and mysterious kind of guy. The more of his videos I watch, the more I wondered, who is he? Does he really live in L.A.? Is he an open conservative? How does he survive if so? Those are the surface questions. I had to do more digging than I expected, but his real name is Christopher Coles. He's a journalist and a fiction writer. He has two volumes of short stories, which are quite brilliant. Uh, Straight White Christian Male Volume 1 and Straight White Christian Male Volume 2. But there's not a lot of information beyond that. So I decided to fly him into our studios in Dallas. I figured the best way to really get some answers was to have him come here so we could talk face to face on this podcast. So my guest today is the unknown Christopher Coles, the man who is the very well-known Mr. Reagan, who has made it his mission to fight the radical left using humor and facts and who may very well help take down the mainstream media in the process. Those who would trade our freedom for the soup kitchen of the welfare state have told us they have a utopian solution of peace without victory. They call their policy accommodation. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems. Well, perhaps there is a simple answer. That we want our national policy based on what we know in our hearts is morally right. 